Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. I was just out walking around and then I found this cute little temple and I thought why not make a video inside here? So yes, this is what we do now. Please before we get started, give me a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe for more videos from Ling Ling if you haven't yet. So today I'm going to fill you guys in on what to know before you're going to Beijing. If you haven't figured it out yet, then don't worry because I got you covered! Without further ado, let's get started on this video. Number one, I just want to say that pollution is a problem in Beijing, but it's not as crazy as it seems if you're reading the foreign news. Yeah, I know, like the foreign news are overacting a little bit. It basically sounds like it's gray and you can't see anything or breathe at all in Beijing ever. This is not true. So even though there is pollution, you will be okay uh, anyways. Uh, you can see the blue sky here on the back today. It's a beautiful day today. Oh my god, the birds here are crazy. Do you think they want to tell me something? Like, get out of my temple? Yeah, it's a good idea to download a pollution app on your phone so you can see every day how the pollution is like and then you can always buy a mask if you really, really feel like you need it. But the second thing to know before coming to Beijing is that the metro system is amazing like the metro system can take you everywhere you want it's all in english you buy a little metro card you can just swipe and swipe swipe and swipe which is amazing but one good thing to know is that china in beijing you probably know there are a lot of people here yes during rush hour you do not want to be in the subway <laughs> i'm telling you it's a nightmare so uh, rush hour is from like 7.30 to 9 in the morning and then again in the evening from 5.30 to 7. So try not to be in the subway at that time because that would just make your trip much nicer. <laughs> Number three on the list is of course the internet. You've probably heard about this before, censorship, blocked websites, can't get into contact with anyone at home. Yes, it's true, a lot of websites are blocked here, all the ones you're probably using like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Gmail, Dropbox. If you want to make sure that you still uh, can get into contact with friends or family at home or if you're just a social butterfly like me, it's a good idea to invest in a VPN for you going. It's much easier when you're abroad because then you can download it and it's no problem and then when you get here you just access, no problem. You can find free VPNs online but they have a tendency to get blocked as well by the government so I would definitely suggest you to look into buying one if you're going to China for a longer time. I have a link below for ExpressVPN, that's the one I'm using. I love that one so, so much because there are so many, 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 many destinations I can go to, go to, uh, on my app. So if Hong Kong is not working or Taiwan is weak, then I'll go to Singapore, I'll go to Japan, I'll go to Australia. I have been literally everywhere in the world. So ExpressVPN, check it out, link below if you're interested. Number four is about food. So in China, it's very common to go out with family and friends, eat around a big round table and you can share all the food. And then if you're with foreigners, you split the price or if you're with a the Chinese, they are probably going to pay. But you are also able to go to normal restaurants where you just buy one meal for yourself. If you have any kinds of food restrictions or if you're like a vegetarian, it might be a little more tricky because it's not so common here in China. So before you go, try to learn the words for vegetarian because there is a word for it and the Chinese might know what you're saying or you know ask beforehand or tell them that you don't want meat in your food then they usually understand it. So number five is actually about the language barrier when you're coming to Beijing. Most people don't speak English so it's a good idea to learn a few words before you're coming to China. You should download this uh, app dictionary called Pleco. It's a very good app to have on your phone because it's offline so you can use it wherever you are. If you're stuck somewhere you can just write your word in English and it's going to translate into Chinese and if you can't read it aloud then it can also read it for you so how cool is that number six is about the size of Beijing basically Beijing is huge so when you're coming here if you're planning to travel around to all the sightseeing spots in one day don't go there guys 
you can manage a lot of things but it's a new city for you if you haven't well if you haven't been here before it's gonna be tricky to get around already it might be a little confusing there are a lot of people and you don't know the metro system everything is very far away so in China no, uh, in Beijing no matter where I go I always think okay it might take an hour so if it takes less that's a good thing but it usually takes an hour to get wherever you want to go so just saying guys don't plan any everything on one day try to stretch it a little bit and take it more easy then you're not gonna be stretched 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 not gonna be stressed about traveling around here either <laughs> okay number seven is also really important in China people don't use a foreign bank cards if you go to like H&M Starbucks McDonald's you can usually pay with your foreign bank card but wherever else you go no taxis no you have to bring cash so just telling you guys when you arrive in the Beijing airport the first thing you should do is to go find an ATM take out some cash and then go and pay with cash wherever you go so much easier also in Beijing they have a lot of ATMs where they can take foreign cards so you can easily take money out of the bank but look for Bank of China it's just the easiest one that one always takes your foreign card the last thing on this list is number eight just want to say that if you're from a country like America where you do tipping it's not very common to tip in China I've never seen any Chinese people do it before I've never done it either I know that if you're with a tour group with American guests then you might have to tip the driver and the tour guide because they don't earn much and they're used to this a foreign custom but wherever else you go don't tip like I even think that if you're tipping a taxi driver or waiter they're gonna be like hey why are you giving so much money like then, then they're gonna give it back to you so just saying guys so it's a little a uh, good thing to know beforehand you know just just don't go there it's gonna be too complicated to explain to them what it is and yeah just don't go there <laughs> anyways guys that was all for this video I hope you could use these tips uh, <laughs> for your future Beijing trip I hope you will enjoy it very much thank you for watching and I'll see you again very very soon Ling Ling South see ya and bye bye